Mm -hmm. You've talked a lot about your time in the streets of Chicago as an organizer. Mm -hmm. Let's bring it to the streets of D.C. Mm -hmm. You know, once, if you are elected, once the, the symbolism uh, of, that, of that achievement of yours and of the country uh, is, is sort of uh, dissipates, once, that, once that we've gotten used to that idea, you know, people are wondering, people in D.C. are wondering, mm -hmm. what kind of a difference are they going to see in their streets? That African Americans who live in the district may have expectations of you in the, in the White House. Can you say specifically how, pr in practical terms, their lives are going to be affected or changed by you being in the White House? Absolutely, but it's not just African Americans, it's people who are struggling generally. Uh, let's talk about uh, what we need to do with our schools. I've talked about putting $18 billion in our public schools, early childhood education, uh, so that children are prepared and we can close the achievement gap. Paying our teachers higher salaries, giving them more support and training, uh, making sure that our colleges of education are accredited so that we're ramping up standards. Uh, making sure that young people who have graduated from high school can afford to go to college by putting forward a four thousand dollar tuition tax credit uh, making sure that we've got a justice department that is working with local law enforcement so that our uh, criminal justice system is administered fairly this is something that i worked on as a state legislator implementing the first laws in illinois to prevent racial profiling making sure that wrongful convictions were reduced uh, making sure that we've got uh, after school programs and summer school programs so that young people aren't on the streets and that the drug trade is not uh, the only option for them, uh, that they're on a pathway to success. Uh, making sure that everybody has health care, including our children, so that we don't have young people going to the emergency room for treatable illnesses like asthma. So uh, there are a host of issues that are going to be specifically targeting urban communities and we have to work on but as i said before you go into rural communities and areas like maine and people are going through some of those same struggles and it's important for us i think to bring rural and urban america together and focus on how do we create an american dream and a pathway to success for everybody senator if i could i think the what leon was getting at is though the the nation's capital mm -hmm. here where a lot of residents feel that the the nation's leaders are not paying much attention uh, to their home city would you as president be doing anything specifically uh, uh, for uh, Washington DC well, I many of the problems that you <coughs> describe are very much uh, well, look, in event it's right abundance right in the shadow of the capital one of the first things I do is make sure that we move forward with an agenda to give uh, DC the opportunity to select their own representatives and have some political power in, on Capitol Hill uh, and I think that pursuing uh, the agenda that was put forward by a Republican like Congressman Davis and uh, as well as Eleanor Holmes Norton to make sure that there's representation that would make a big difference uh, I want to deal with the homeless situation here in Washington DC I think it is a travesty that we've got uh, men and increasingly women families across the streets of our state capital in the shadow of the great monuments of this country uh, th that shows a lack of uh, concern uh, not just for the capital, but for America when we are allowing something like that to happen. And as President of the United States, I would be offended to drive by it. It's something that we are going to focus uh, directly on. And Mayor Fenty, uh, I think, has shown an interest in wanting to move forward on this. He and I would like to co collaborate on that Let issue. Let me toss one more time on that pile. One other issue here is the HIV infection rate. Right. I, I'm sure you've got to be aware that D.C. has the highest infection right. rate in the nation, the nation's capital. Right. And, and that is in itself shameful. Do you have a plan to address that? I do. Uh, I think it's important for us to make sure that we are targeting uh, HIV AIDS resources into the communities where we're seeing the highest growth rates. Uh, that means education and prevention, particularly with young people. Uh, it means that we have to look at uh, the drastic measures, potentially like needle exchange, in order to assure that drug uh, users are not transmitting the disease to each other. And we've got to expand on treatment programs. And all that is going to cost some money and some time. But uh, again, you know, if we think about uh, the enormous costs of homelessness or the enormous costs of HIV AIDS over the long term as people visit emergency rooms, et cetera, the more we are investing in that ounce of prevention, the better off we're going to be, uh, even fiscally, not to mention the quality of life for people. Let me tell us one more, if I can. Uh, one other issue that is of, of great importance here in, in the district as well is gun control. Mm -hmm. uh, you said in Idaho recently, uh, quoting here, I have no intention of taking away folks' guns. But you support the D.C. handgun ban, and you've right. said that it's constitutional. How can you reconcile those two different oh, positions? Uh, because I think we're, we, have, we have two conflicting traditions in this country. 
Uh, I think it is important for us to recognize that we've got a tradition of handgun ownership and gun ownership generally. And a lot of people, law-abiding citizens, use it for hunting, for uh, sportsmanship, and for protecting their families. We also have a violence uh, on the streets that is a result of illegal handgun use. And so there is nothing wrong, I think, with a community saying we are going to take those illegal handguns off the streets. We are going to trace more effectively uh, how these guns are ending up on the streets to unscrupulous gun dealers who uh, oftentimes are selling to straw purchasers. And cracking down on the, the various loopholes that exist in terms of background checks for children, the mentally ill, th th those are all approaches that I think the average gun owner would actually support. The problem is, is that we've got uh, a, a position oftentimes by the NRA that says any regulation whatsoever is the camel's nose under the tent. And that, I think, uh, is, is not where the American people are at. I think we can have reasonable, thoughtful gun control measures that still respect uh, the Second Amendment and people's traditions. Senator, the presidency is not just an inspirational job. Right. It's also an executive job in mm -hmm. which presidents have to make really tough decisions virtually every day. Neither you nor Senator Clinton has executive experience. Or Senator McCain. Or Senator McCain, that's mm -hmm. true. Uh, what I wonder is, since you came to Washington, yeah. what's the toughest decision you've had to make? What made it so hard, and what does that tell us about you as president? Well, you know, obviously, legislative decisions uh, come up all the time. I mean, so one very difficult decision was uh, deciding uh, to vote against uh, the appropriations bill for the war. Uh, I had consistently said that I wanted to make sure our troops got adequate you know, training, adequate equipment uh, in the war effort, despite the fact that I had opposed the war. At, a, at the point where the president decided to double down to send more troops in, it became clear that he was not going to sit down and negotiate some sort of exit strategy, and I had to vote against uh, funding uh, as a way of bringing him back to the table. That was a difficult decision for me because it was contrary to my view, uh, particularly after you visit Iraq and you see the troops over there, you want to make sure that they're getting a strong signal that we support them. Uh, but uh, on, on the broader issue of, of executive uh, experience, uh, it, it is true that most of my career has been in the legislative role. Uh, that is true of all the candidates remaining in the field, uh, except for Governor Huckabee, who, who, who remains. Uh, but keep in mind that if you look, for example, at how I've conducted this campaign, I started from scratch and was up against a operation that had been built uh, over the course of 20 years by a former president. Uh, with the bulk of the Democratic establishment uh, on their side. And after setting up a hundred million plus dollar operation with hundreds of employees around the country, it looks like we've played them to a draw so far. Right. Uh, I think that gives you some sense of how we run a campaign. There hasn't been a lot of drama in my campaign. Uh, you haven't seen a lot of to turnover in my campaign. Uh, and the culture of our campaign is one in which I think everybody feels a great sense of ownership. That's the kind of leadership I right. want to I provide. I think you were making president. a reference to uh, something you also said on 60 Minutes, where you, you said uh, that you've proven you can stand up to the Republicans because you've already stood up to, quote, the Clinton machine. Mm -hmm. And you also said that the Clintons can, quote, play rough. What were you talking about? How well, have they played I, rough? I don't, think it's, I, I don't think it's anything that necessarily <laughs> is out of bounds, but I think that the notion that somehow uh, the Clintons have, have, have coddled to me <laughs> and that the Republicans are, are these big, big bad folks who have a different research operation than the Clintons do, I think is, is just not the case. I mean, they are competing actively for this nomination, uh, as I'm sure the Republicans will be. I, I think it's fair to say that uh, any Democrat running uh, against another Democrat may be somewhat more constrained uh, on some of the negative stuff that uh, we run just by our own constituencies. Uh, but I also think that uh, it, it, what we have shown is that we can take a punch. We've shown that we can take a loss. Uh, I think that nobody expected us uh, to be here. And if we didn't uh, have confidence in the quality of our operation, and more importantly, if I didn't have confidence that the American people desperately want a president who is listening to them and the hardships that they're going through and want somebody that they can trust and is not taking PAC money and not taking federal lobbyist money and is willing to uh, fight on their behalf against insurance and drug companies to get health care passed or the oil companies and the gas companies to get energy legislation that makes sense for America. It, 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 they ha they, that's what they want. And the reason we're here 
uh, is because we are seeing this enormous uh, outpouring of, of support for this new kind of politics. Yeah, I'm going to ask you, 